This American rock band was formed out of the ashes of Nirvana. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're taking a look at the history of the Foo Fighters. Alternative rock band Foo Fighters formed in Seattle, Washington in 1994. The group started off as a one-man project for Dave Grohl, following the dissolution of his former band Nirvana. After recording several songs he had written himself, Grohl released a demo that gained the interest of various record labels. These recordings were released as the Foo Fighters' self-titled debut in 1995. The alt-rock record reached the top 25 on the Billboard 200 chart. It spawned the singles I'll Stick Around and Big Me, which became a crossover hit on pop radio. Though Grohl had written and recorded almost all of the songs on the Foo Fighters' debut, he formed a full band to support the material on tour. This band consisted of Grohl on lead vocals and rhythm guitar, Nate Mendel on bass, William Goldsmith on drums, and Pat Smear on second guitar. The band's sophomore effort was 1997's The Color and the Shape. It featured a similar alternative rock sound to their first album and became a top 10 record on the Billboard 200. The Grammy-nominated disc included the singles Monkey Wrench, monkey wrench. Everlong, and My Hero. Though Grohl had again written the songs, this time around the other members contributed to the musical arrangements. Shortly before the release of this record, Taylor Hawkins replaced drummer William Goldsmith. Guitarist Franz Stahl then joined the band for some tour dates after Pat Smear's departure. Though he was only with the Foo Fighters for a few months, he recorded two songs with them. One of these was the re-recording of Walking After You for the soundtrack to the 1998 movie, The X-Files. Grohl, Mendel, and Hawkins then recorded the band's third album as a trio. 1999's There Is Nothing Left to Lose featured a softer, alternative sound, and it was another top 10 Billboard record. Watching the whole world wide, round and round, I'll be coming home next year. The disc also won the band its first two Grammy Awards, including one for the music video that accompanied the highly successful track Learn to Fly. It was around this time that the Foos began a relationship with the remaining members of classic rock band Queen. As huge fans, Grohl and Hawkins were lucky enough to induct the band into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They performed live together several times and even recorded a few tracks as well. Chris Shiflett made his debut as guitarist with the Foos on their next record, 2002's One by One. One by one hitting up my sleeve. The Grammy-winning album reached number three on the Billboard 200 and generated the singles All My Life and Times Like These. It's times like these Five's In Your Honor was a double album that featured one disc with rock songs and another with acoustic tunes. The commercially successful opus yielded the singles DOA and Best of You, and these both topped the modern rock charts. After a short acoustic tour, the Foo Fighters released their first live album, 2006's Skin and Bones. Bones. 
Album number six dropped in 2007. Echoes, Silence, Patience, and Grace debuted at number three on the Billboard 200 and won them two more Grammy Awards. In addition, it gave the band three number one modern rock hits, including Long Road to Ruin, and The Pretender. The Foo Fighters' seventh album was 2011's Wasting Light. Recorded using analog equipment, the disc contains songs such as White Limo and Rope. This effort also marked the return of Smear as a core band member, though he had been touring with the Foos for a few years. Their heavy and melodic tracks, coupled with their energetic live shows, have ensured the Foo Fighters' consistent success and popularity throughout the years. As such, they have become one of the biggest alternative rock bands of the post-grunge era. 